It's cold outside. Anybody else notice a bit of a cold snap here in the UK? Apart from a quick jaunt to Montdor in the motorhome about mm, a year or so ago, we've not actually spent much time in a really cold environment because generally in the winter we hole up on the boat. So this is the first year that I've actually been in the van for an extended period of time when it's been really, really cold. So I've learned a lot. It's been a massive learning curve. I want to share with you a few of the most important things that I've learned in case you didn't know them either. I know some people will know this and be like, yeah, obviously, because um, a few of my friends were like, did you not know that? Apparently not. So there are a few things here if you are spending time in the cold in your van that you might find useful. If you've got any other tips that you think other people might not know, then by all means drop them in the comments. And if you're new to the channel and you'd like to get more motorhoming and van life videos, then by all means click subscribe. Right, let's dive in. Jim Mac is sitting on my lap, not because he wants to be in the video and not because he wants to be close to me, which is so lovely and heartwarming. No, it's because on the chair next to me is the bed that he likes to hump, that he's not allowed to hump, that I put on the chair next to me to keep out the way of him. And he's like, well, if I just sit here, you might not notice that I'm sneakily getting this way. So we'll see how long he lasts. So for those of you who are not in the UK, it has been minus two, minus four, which may not be particularly cold to those of you based in somewhere like Canada or Norway, but to us in the UK, here that is cold that is very very cold and certainly for a sustained period it's been like this for a couple of weeks now so whereas like in Mont d'Or it was a couple of days and the van was all right we've actually had really sustained freezing weather which has caused some sorts of issues with the van and the first thing that I want to remind everybody to do is turn on your tank heaters if you have them in your van now I've got the Swift Escape 685 it has got tank heaters built in and I was so proud of myself that when the cold snap first kicked in I was like ah tank heaters on I have won at life what I forgot to do is when I drove the van I think I went to get more fuel uh, LPG and get some food is that that turned the tank heaters off so then you have to turn them on again manually next time you stop and park up and plug in the electric and all the rest of the stuff I didn't know that I just thought they were on which is probably a good safety thing to be fair because let's face it I'd have forgotten to turn them off again another thing I didn't do is leave my waste tank open I know everyone has said this but I was like well I've got my tank heaters on it'll be fine I didn't have my tank heaters on and therefore the waste tank pipe froze so luckily it's not like it was minus 20 and the whole thing froze and cracked and everything else. A couple of things that people who know much more about the situation than I do shared with me is one, make sure that your waste never gets full. So as soon as I realized that it had frozen, I stopped actually putting anything down it and it was only about half full. So that gave time for if it did like properly ice up, it gave room for it to expand. And the other thing they said was don't try and open it once you know it's frozen so obviously I opened it nothing happened and then I closed it up again and it wasn't until I drove the van and about half an hour driving after I stopped it was all nice and open and fr frost free which is how we like it so if it's not particularly cold you might find that driving for a little bit resolves that problem rather than having to resort to a couple of hours with a hairdryer which is something somebody else suggested I didn't really fancy doing that in minus two weather luckily I didn't have to but that is of course an alternative but the way to get around all of that is put your tank heaters on leave your waste tank open and then put obviously a bucket underneath it or catch it, unless you've got a pipe on if you're on a service pitch make sure that you've got a pipe then that will uh, take it to the appropriate drain the next thing that I didn't know about which is genius is in my Truma settings on the heating in my van we have a mix now I've always seen this because of course you've got gas you've got electric you've got electric one and electric two which is a thousand watts and two thousand watts and then you've got mix one and mix two which is a thousand watts and two thousand watts I didn't know this um, I didn't know what mix meant and mix means that it uses the gas the LPG to get up to temperature and once it's up to the temperature that you've selected on the dial it then uses the electric to keep it there and the gas definitely warms up the place quicker than the electric does and one thing I have noticed that when it's got really really cold like minus four minus five onwards the electric just it just gave up even on like 2000 watts which is risky if you're on a campsite I wouldn't suggest using a 2000 watts on your electric because you're likely to trip the campsite I just turned it on that way to try it and it still didn't particularly heat up after about half an hour so I turned it off again but mix mix works really really well and you do so much less gas doing it that way so that's definitely a really good tip it just keeps it nice and ambient in the van another thing I found out is that it has temperatures on my control panel now the, two, the internal one is consistently very low I don't believe it is 2.8 but 
if you uh, go sideways, you can see the humidity and you can also see what the external temperature is. That's probably slightly more realistic. For anybody else who's got a Swift, I have to say I'm really impressed by how well insulated it has been. I've got carpets on the floor and I also bought a nice shiny sparkly rug, which I thought this one would chew to pieces in about a day. He hasn't even touched it. I'm very impressed. Thank you, pup. Thank you. This is really helping. Um, I was really impressed, but that has just been nice on your feet. And the other thing that people recommended to me, which definitely helps, is get like slipper socks or some sort of slippers because it just puts a layer between you and the, the floor of the van, which is obviously a lot cooler. Now, it's not been cold enough to do things like insulating your wheel arches or putting a skirt around the van like you do if you're going to the Alps for winter. So we haven't done any of that. The other thing I didn't do was put my fridge vent covers on. Now, there was no real reason for this. I talked about it and I said that I should do it and I didn't. And the reason I didn't is because they are under the bed that I have now got made up as a bed pretty much permanently. And I couldn't be bothered to move the mattress to get them out. There's no other reason, but I haven't really felt that there has been a massive loss or issue with me not using them. So I have to say, having looked around the campsite, very few people have got their fridge covers on. And I don't think it's been a huge amount of issue. Now, obviously if it gets a lot cooler or a lot colder, then that might become more of a problem, but certainly minus two, minus four, I wouldn't worry too much about fridge vent covers. They're not, they've not been as essential as I thought they were going to be. Another thing, which honestly I cannot stress how amazing it is is my silver screen not a drop of condensation not even a speck of condensation mr wb when he came to the exact same campsite and me with his van because if you haven't followed for a while he's now got a race van that he puts his motorbike in the back of it's easy for him to, to go around the country touring with it and he only had a curtain that goes across the cab and he got ice on the inside of his window because of all the condensation which is then frozen this thing, not a stitch. It's just brilliant. Um, so I cannot recommend that highly enough. If you are going to spend winter in your van, definitely silver screen, superb. Now, one thing that I did learn, which was a steep learning curve, I spent a week camped on my parents' driveway, much to their neighbor's endless delight. Their next door neighbor doesn't really approve of motorhomes, but never mind. Um, so I was on their driveway and I was literally just running off battery power because they didn't have an electric plug. And I don't know where my uh, three pin plug extension bit that goes onto the cable has disappeared. I don't know where it's gone. So I didn't have it. So I was literally living off battery power. Now, I spent a week when I was touring up to Scotland, off grid, didn't plug in at all, not an issue because the solar recharged the batteries and I wasn't using a huge amount of battery power. And even though I spent most of my time in my parents' house, the batteries during the week when I was on my parents' driveway when it was cold and I was using the heating, they drained and they drained so quickly. After about four days, my leisure battery was down at something scary like 11 amps and then it dropped down into the tens and then it dropped below 10 amps. I would not recommend trying this. This has apparently damaged my battery quite badly, which given that I'm going to change it hopefully sometime in the future is uh, not too much of a terrifying thing. But if you have got batteries that you want to keep for a while, don't let it get that low. Um, but it dropped below 10 amps and it cut off the heating. This happened at about two o'clock in the morning and the heating had just stopped working. And I couldn't figure out why or what the error code meant. And it turns out on the Truma system, if your battery goes below 10 amps, the heating cuts out. Which, if I'd known about that, I don't know what I'd done. I'd probably have gone for a drive, to be fair, to give the battery a little bit of a charge up. But what I discovered at two o'clock in the morning when I was freezing cold, I couldn't get into my parents' house because they were fast asleep. What I discovered was that you can change on your main control panel obviously in the Swift, and I'm assuming most vans have got something similar, you can change from using the leisure battery to using the engine battery, the vehicle battery. So there is a setting where you can go from the battery with the L to the battery with the V, and that will give it enough power to get you through the rest of the night. Now, I don't recommend using it long term because obviously that's going to drain down your vehicle battery. So when you come to start the thing, it will not work because there won't be enough power in there to start your engine. But you can use it for a couple of hours in a minus two night just to get you through the night until you can find a better fix the next day. I was amazed when on a warm sunny day I was getting about 0.3 amps from solar because even though it was sunny it was not enough and if you imagine how many amps I mean I was what three amps that I was lower than I really wanted to be I mean that's 10 hours. 
I'm trying to do maths now. Is that 10 hours? Yeah, that's 10 hours. <laughs> and that, you know, you don't get 10 hours of sunlight and that's 10 hours without using anything. So I was keeping the heating on very low just to keep it ambient during the day. And yeah, I did use a fair amount of gas, but not as much as I thought, to be fair. I went the week on our gas bottle, which is about 13 kilos before I then had to refill up again. Uh, if you're anywhere near Exeter, um, there's a big station in Taunton. The same reason Taunton's got gas or it did have gas when I filled up then. So that was easy to get to with a motorhome. home. Uh, but I went, I went pretty much a week just by keeping it on ambient and then turning it up in the evening when I went into the van. So that worked pretty well. But yeah, it drained the battery, drained the battery a lot. So be aware of that, that you can actually change it if you need to in an emergency, which minus two at two o'clock in the morning, Morning, I said was. Talking of heating, another thing I learnt, this was my bad, I, I had some of the heating vents uh, blocked, not blocked but had stuff in front of them. So I had my bag in front of one of them and I had uh, another, I can't remember what it was now, but something else in front of another one. I was like, oh, the heating's not doing as well as it normally does. It must be because it's so cold. No, Catherine, it's because half of them can't let the hot air out. So make sure, especially in something like Christmas when you've got stuff around, make sure that nothing is in front of the heating. The other thing I really recommend, and it's one of the things I love about our van, is we have got a heating outlet in the bathroom, which is brilliant because that's where you can put all your wet coats, dog stuff, if I've dried him with his towel, his wet leads, um, all of that kind of stuff that you don't really know where to put in the van, it just kind of gets in the way and then that creates condensation. If you put it somewhere that's near a heating outlet, like the bathroom is perfect. And the other thing is don't have the bathroom outlet if you've got one, don't have it open full. Had it open about half four and that way, because it's so normally so close to the uh, trimmer unit, you get a lot of hot air there. So if you shut it a little bit, it actually forces the hot air to go around the rest of the van. Because I've definitely noticed a difference in the temperature between up here in the cab and down on the other end, which is a lot closer to the trimmer unit. It's, it's a lot warmer down that end than it is down here. One thing which I want to just draw your attention to, if you are spending the winter in your van and you've got puppies, um, they're paws their paws get frostbite quite badly. So although it might be a beautiful day and you want to go for a nice long walk with them, they don't always tell you when their paws are getting frozen and damaged. So just keep your walks fairly short so that they don't get too uh, too badly hurt because that's the kind of thing that you don't really see or don't really know to look for. And to be fair, I hadn't thought about it until somebody mentioned it to me. So I just want to pass that on to anyone who has got dogs or indeed cats if you take your cats outside. Just be aware of, beware their little paws. So there are a whistle stop tour of all the things I've learned over the last few weeks. If you have got anything which you've learned and the cold snap and you think other people might know or might not know, don't be scared. Everyone is a beginner and everyone's got to learn somehow. So drop your comments below. You might just help somebody else out. If you found that helpful and you'd like to see more motorhoming tips, then hit subscribe. Thank you as always for your time and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.